Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Spartan Stadium, home of the Milford High School Football Spartans. It's 2019 New Hampshire High School Football, live on Granite Town Media. Hello, everyone. I'm Kevin St. Ange, joined in the press box by president of the Milford Booster Club, Dennis Shepard. Dennis, welcome to the game. Thank you. Good evening. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day, and we're looking for a great season from the Spartans. Uh, last year, a team that went 6-4 and four and uh, lost in the first round of the state tournament uh, played this same Hollis Brookline uh, Cavalier football team earlier in the season. Yep. Before we talk about how the season ended, let's talk about the game against Hollis Brookline a year ago. Well, Milford came out strong in that game. Um, you know, Milford has a strong running game. They're, they're a smash mouth football team for the most part. Uh, in the second half, Hollis came out with their, their twins, the Winers, the Wimmers, and um, and they're able to pass over over our corner. So hopefully this year we've, we've taken care of that. Um, but they did come last year with two quick, uh, or three quick touchdowns and uh, win that game. So. Um, this, this is going to be the, a playoff game atmosphere here. We'll talk a little bit about more uh, a little bit more about that game from a year ago, but right now we're getting ready for the national anthem by the Spartan Marching Band. National Anthem coming up in just a moment. The Milford Spartans have taken the field for their 2019 season. Tri-Captains, Junior Ugu, Kyle Forsley, Gavin Erda. Three players that I think you coached along the way uh, in the program, the Milford Mustangs. I did. Kyle Forsley and, uh, and Colton Burroughs started with me in the, as a second grade uh, players uh, back in 2009. So they're here on 11 years of football. According to coach head, uh, head coach Keith Jones, uh, all three expected to make significant contributions this year together with 22 returning seniors from a year ago. Yeah, it's an incredible group of kids, um, outstanding classmates, um, and these kids, are, have been, these kids are, are together regularly every day. Um, they know each other so well that I think that this is going to be a great season for them. So I jumped the gun a moment ago, but now we will start with the national anthem played by the Marching Spartans. Milford High School marching Spartans under the direction of band leader Brad Smith. So let's talk about the weather a little bit here, Dennis. Tonight it's forecast for cloudy with periods of rain. High of about 68 today, dropping to 53 on the overnight. Got a 90% chance of rain, about half an inch expected. Winds are pretty light, 10 to 15 miles an hour. 86% humidity though. Sunset scheduled for 712, pretty much coinciding with game time. Mm -hmm. How do you think the weather could affect tonight's game if, in fact, it does decide to rain? Well, I think um, if it's a passing game by Hollis, I think that could interrupt their, their passing game. But where, we, uh, where the Milford is a smash mouth, drive the ball, and run, I think that uh, will be in their favor at that time. Talking a little bit uh, about the Hollis Brookline Cavaliers. They're coached by uh, fourth year head coach Chris Lonas. 19 and 19 unofficially, his record in his second stint as the uh, head coach. He was with the team in 14 and 15, 
uh, and then back again in 17 and 18. So this is a, a newer program in NHI AA. Uh, overall, their record is a, a sub 500, 56 and 74 from since inception. Not a great record on the road. They're 10 games under 500, 28 and 38, um, and their record in 2018, five and four. According to the National uh, Nashua Telegraph, they were the best team not to make the playoffs. Right. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on this Hollis Brookline team? Uh, you contrasted their offense uh, with yeah. Milford's, uh, unlike uh, the Smash Mouth uh, game that Milford plays. We expect to see the Wimmer brothers uh, throw the ball around the yard a little bit. We do, and there was some rumor that uh, one of them was injured, so we'll see how that plays out, if that's the case at all. That was a rumor. But um, really, the, the games came down to who, who won and lost at Sauhegan. Um, so, you know, we know South, uh, the South Conference here is a tough conference, whether it goes through Pelham, Sauhegan, um, Conval or, or Milford or Hollis. So uh, all four or five of those teams can make the playoffs. Um, they all beat each other up, and, and, uh, and we'll see who comes out with that. So we've had the coin toss, and it appears that uh, Hollis Brookline has won the toss, and they've elected to receive. So he'll, he'll be our first, uh, get the first sit and see what uh, Hollis brings in, in the offense. So. Yeah, well, Hollis will take the field with their all-state quarterback, Sander Wimmer. Uh, gives Milford a chance, however, with their big defensive line um, and um, uh, an experienced secondary, an opportunity mm -hmm. to see what they can do against this wide open offense. But yep. it also, first game of the year, gives both teams a chance, uh, well, the Spartans especially on defense, to lay that first hit on the other right. team. So, so this will give us a chance to see in what, what kind of uh, coaching was done during the week. There were some changes made on our line. Um, but, of course, in that backfield, Gavin Erd is going to be the, the speedster um, in that basically in that backfield there. So um, we'll see what kind of pressure Milford can pose, and we'll see what, what Hollis brings. So Milford head coach uh, Keith Jones enters his 19th season as the head coach. Uh, unofficially, 91 and, 60, uh, 91 and 62 is his record in that time period. Last year, 6-4, and four, of course, that loss in the state quarterfinals to Alvern. But it's a brand-new season. Both teams are 0-0 uh, zero and zero as we get set to start the... 2019 football season, uh, Max Prep website uh, preseason rankings had Milford at number eight in the state of New Hampshire. Right. And this Hollis Brookline team um, did not return as many seniors as Milford by any means. Right. They were ranked number 11. Yep. Hollis Brookline wearing their road white uniforms with blue trim and blue pants. Milford wearing their home solid blues. Stepping back to do the kicking duties for the Spartans is number 40, Colin Gregg. Back deep for Hollis Brookline. So Colin is a new place kicker for Milford this year. Kickoff went to Austin Johnson. He takes it uh, right up the middle of the field, wide open gap. He has one man to beat, Colin Gregg. He gets past the kicker, and it's a off to the we races. We do have a flag in the, uh, behind the play. Uh, Johnson was dragged down at the 20-yard line, Milford's 20-yard line, but we'll have to wait and see what that flag is. First play of the 2019 New Hampshire high school football season. We are underway. So it looks like we have a flag against the Cavaliers, so that ball will be coming back. The preliminary call it appears it is a penalty against the Cavaliers. Yeah. We have a face mask. Uh, face mask penalty uh, against face Hollis Brookline. They will take their call. first crack on offense. We'll establish, we should be back around the 30 yard line. We'll establish the line of scrimmage to start the season here. We're waiting just for the referee to pace it off. At least it won't be on the Milford 20-yard line. That's right. We're not exactly the way Coach Jones was looking to start that one off. So. With the penalty, though, it appears that uh, the Cavaliers will start on their 26, 27-yard line. First down and 10. We're just underway. 11:47 remaining to play in the, the first Cavaliers quarter. First, first play of the game. Face mask penalty. Line. Sander Wimmer in the shotgun. Little wing T formation, and Wimmer's going to run out of that sweep to the left side. He turns the corner and gets to about the 35-yard line. He's tackled by number 74, Colton Burrows. 
Colton Burrows uh, tackle for the Spartans. Colton Burrows uh, recognized by the Manchester Union leader as one of the players to watch for this season on the Spartans. Colton works hard all year round. He's, he's been a hard worker probably for the past 11 years. So. Cavaliers do not huddle up. They take the play from the sideline in position. Trips right. Wimmer out to his brother. Wimmer, Quinton, makes one man miss and is gang tackled at about the 36, maybe 37 yard line. That'll bring up a third down and short. First pass attempt is complete. Wimmer to Wimmer. I have a feeling we'll be saying that a lot tonight. We will, and we should see the no huddle for most of the game by Hollis. Third, down, one third and one. The ball is on the Cavaliers' 36-yard line. Shotgun formation again by the Cavaliers. Wimmer takes the snap, and he, it's, a, it's a direct run off, off tackle right. He picks up the first down. Looks like he steps out of bounds about the 45, maybe 46. We'll wait for the spot. Is good enough for first down, of course, moves the chains. Trevor Coyne on the stop. Ball was spotted the at the, Balls on the 44. Four-yard line, where it is first and 10. Milford defense is a 5-3 base defense. Wimmer in the shotgun, takes the high snap, drops back to pass. He's looking to run, passes to the right side. Ball is intended for, hard to see from here. Pass. Incomplete, I believe. To Dominic Coyne was incomplete. Yep. It'll be second down. And intended. Intended. That was number 42, Joseph Shepard. Pass was complete, but the they lost a half a yard. Pass was complete. It looks to uh, Colin Robinson. Two for two for Wimmer so far. Back again in the shotgun. To give us up the middle. Fumble, it appears to have been... Looks like it was recovered. Recovered by the Cavaliers. And we have an injury on the field. An Looks like Colton Burrows is down at the moment. And we'd like to welcome everybody. We are live on Granite Town Media. Kevin St. Ange along with Dennis Shepard bringing you Milford Spartan football where we are underway in the first quarter. Ten minutes remaining in the first quarter. The Cavaliers have the ball third and about... We're guessing about 11 or so. It looks like a third and 11. Milford injured player appears to be Colton Burrows. Uh, Dennis, tell us a little bit about Colton. So Colton is, um, again, he's been playing for about 11 years. He's dedicated to football. Uh, he does not play another sport. Um, in fact, he's going to be playing for USA football um, down in Dallas for the International Bowl come January. Um, he's an excellent player. He's kind of a motivator for these guys to lift an exercise all season long. So uh, hopefully this is just a, a quick breather on the ground and we get him back. 5'11", 245, he's a senior wearing number 74. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, most of the press in the state, when they talk about Milford football, they're talking about the size of the uh, offensive and defensive yep. line and um, anchored by Colton Burrows and um, Kyle, Boot, uh, Kyle Forsley. Kyle Forsley, yep. uh, also a senior. Burroughs is up and walking under his own power. So when play resumes here at the 10 minute mark, it'll be third down and 11 from the Cavalier 43 yard line. So definitely this is a, a line that has grown in the past year, year and a half. Uh, we have some big, big boys out there. Kind of interesting to see the uh, that second pass was to number 40, Colin Robinson. If the uh, roster we were given is accurate, he's a true freshman for the Cavaliers. Wimmer in the shotgun formation. He takes a couple of steps back from that. He's looking Good downfield, flush to the right. Now he lets it go. Caught by Robinson up the middle. He gets a first down and is dragged down by a host of Spartan defenders. Milford defensive line did his job. They flushed Wimmer, but I'm not sure they necessarily want to do that. No, we want to keep him in the pocket, and we want to put pressure on him. So. 
Cavaliers come out, slot left, it appears. The ball is on the 39-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Cavaliers. We knew the Cavaliers were going to throw the ball all over the yard today, and here we go again. Wimmerd back to pass. The right-handed thrower steps up, completes the pass over the middle to number 25. Gavin Erda with the tackle. That's Austin Johnson, he's brought down by... Gavin Erda. Gavin Erda, number 14. The Spartan, all-everything, quarterback, strong safety. Probably the best athlete punter. out on the field right now. Balls on the Spartan First and 10, First balls and back to the Spartan 20-yard okay. yard line where it was after the opening kickoff. Penalty negated that. Pass is complete again to Johnson. Pass Looks like it was taken down by number 42, Joseph Shepard. Joe Shepard, also a very versatile athlete. He'll play nose guard occasionally, typically in a um, linebacker. This no huddle offense causing a little bit of trouble for the Spartan defense. Wimmer gives it to, looks like Robinson. Robinson runs off, ta off guard right. And he's brought, that's, that's another gang tackle by the Spartan defensive line. Yeah, it looked like Caden Zielinski initially got in there of Junior Ugu, but. 8.48 to play in the first quarter. First and 10. Excuse me, first and goal inside the 10 yard line. Slot right formation, wing is on the left side. That's Johnson with Robinson in the backfield. Wimmer's gonna take it. He's taking off down hard. Guard and he's tackled Junior hard. Ugu. Junior Ugu, unassisted. Wimmer on the carry. With an offense that runs relies so heavily on its quarterback in this way, and not as a runner primarily, but as a thrower, it is interesting to see Coach Lonis going with that quarterback run. Game one, 2019 season, you get your quarterback hurt this early in the season, it could right. really undo some plans. Yeah, but when your team's built around the two twins. We have trips right formation. Wimmer back to pass, pressure. he's flushed out of the pocket, right side along the sideline, pass to the end of zone, intercepted by the Spartans, and he's the return. Can't identify the player yet. Gavin Erda. Wimmer's pass. Looks like Erda stepped right in front of Robinson. You will see this year, Gavin Erda will find that ball. Gavin Erda on the interception. The ball was returned to the 12 yard line. We'll check the film on that. I'm not sure it was Gavin. I think it was actually number 20. Matt Hannon. We'll go back and look at the film on that. Spartans hold, bend but don't break. First and 10 at the Spartan 11 yard line. Gavin Erda under center. And a little bit we offside. Have, but yeah, we have the illegal procedure by the offense. There was definitely movement along the left side, left line, left side of the line. Let me get finished yep. the thought. That'll move the ball back five yards, bringing up first and 15. Ball appears to be on the six yard line. I think both teams are trying to get the early season jitters out of the way. Penalty negated a huge run back on the opening kickoff. Now Milford on their first offensive series, first play from scrimmage, uh, has, has a false start. They'll be they'll be filling each other out right now. Berta gives the ball to, oh, oh we have another fumble on the play. Hollis Brookline has recovered that. I believe that was Hanrahan on the handoff. Yeah, that was and a hard hit. Hanrahan just got to protect that ball. He ran off tackle right, was met by the Cavaliers. Fumble ensued, and the ball is spotted at the Spartan 18-yard line. Cavaliers are back in business. Trips right, wide left. One setback, Robinson next to Wimmer. Wimmer takes the snap in, hands it off to Robinson. Of, uh, goes over the center, and he's pushed back hard, and it's Being still... Wrapped up in these Still being pushed back. Caden Zielinski. Caden Zielinski on the tackle. Looked like he was trying to push Robinson all the way back to Hollis Brookline. He was. Loss of three on the play, second down. Public address announcer doing my job here at Spartan Field. We appreciate that, Steve Martin. Second down and 13. 
Wimmer, back to pass. Wimmer steps up in the pocket. A little bit of pressure. It's collapsing on him. Oh, he, ha he escaped Shepherd nicely. Shepard's has him wrapped up, but it, Wimmer's able to get rid of the ball. So a nice job by Junior Ugu. We had uh, Mikey McGuire, Shepard, Hodges, all of those guys on our line putting some pressure on the quarterback. Difference on that play, though, Dennis, is they kept him in the pocket. They, they, didn't, did. they did not allow him to break, contain, or get outside the tackle which allowed more guys to come in and provide more pressure exactly. and resulted in, I believe, the first incomplete pass of the game. Yeah, I, be I believe so. Double slot formation. Wimmer takes the high snap. He goes to the right side. That pass is complete. Wimmer's pass was complete to Blake Bergeron. Bergeron. Blake Bergeron is on the receiving end of that. Picks up a couple fourth and maybe a long yard and a half, maybe give it two. So Milford's line's doing its job. You might see Coach Jones bring up those corners a little bit and put a little bit more pressure if the, we're going to keep seeing that swing pass. Field's getting a little shorter here. Wimmer taking it off tackle right. He's met in the backfield by Joe Shepard and then is brought down by Samson Hodges. So I think we're seeing some of the game plan that Coach Jones put in play this week was that uh, they moved Shepard from the Jones middle Shepherd linebacker to that nose Spartans. tackle and to the nose position, um, just trying to get a little bit more speed in there and, and put some pressure on Wimmer. So. Dennis, I have to ask, that was a fourth down play, fourth and short, but the ball was spotted on about the 10 or 11 yard yep. line. No field goal attempt? Maybe, I don't know what Hollis has for an, for an attempt, but... They have some confidence in their in their quarterback. So. Apparently. So Gavin Erda takes over under center for the Spartans. Shepard switches sides left to right. Not sure who had the, oh, Looks Ugu. like Junior had it. The Junior Ugu up the middle and is met pretty much at the line of scrimmage by the interior defensive line of the Cavaliers. Very short game. One thing to see this year is how Junior has developed. You know, there were some issues years ago where Junior, he's a super strong player, um, but sometimes he'll be running a little straight up, um, and we've seen him developed into a great strong player. And I think as long as he keeps that his head down and, and drives, we're going to see some big runs out of him. At six foot one, obviously he is a tall target, so mm -hmm. he's got to get his shoulder pads low and level and and, and plow exactly. through that. At 245 pounds, he has the ability to move that pile. Yep. Um, but the uh, Hollis Brookline Cavalier defensive line stood him up on that play. They did. Yep. We have a timeout on the field, 5.59 remaining in the first quarter of play. Second and 10 from the Spartan, call it just shy of the 10 yard line. So as a former head coach yourself at the youth and recreation level, timeout like this, early in the season, early in the game, what is Coach uh, Keith Jones talking to his team about? I think he's just he's telling them to, uh, it's a we not me program here, so everybody on this team has to do their part. Um, there are no superstars per se, so, um, and football is de definitely a team sport, so um, every one of these players has a role in this program. And, um, and we're, we're going to see them come together, I believe, as a strong team. So right now we are, looks like we are second down. Second and ten. Ten. Still at the ten-yard line. Berta, under center, Kyle Forsley, tri-captain, over the ball. Hanrahan in motion to give us to Ugu up the middle. He breaks free, first down, and a couple of more. Nice run by the senior fullback, Junior Ugu. See, when Junior lowers his pads, he's going to drive every one of these guys down. Moves the chains, first and ten from the Spartan 23-yard line. You know, when the other team's quarterback is playing linebacker and running into Junior Ugu. I was just thinking that. You're putting a lot on your, your quarterback. Erda on her center. Motion, Hanrahan, give his to Ugu up the middle. And Ugu just laid a hit on Hollis' is number four. He's a running back that looks for contact, doesn't he, Dennis? That, that Absolutely, he thrives on it. A little slow getting up on that play, though. He's shaking his head, maybe got his bell rung a little bit. Gain of almost 10 yards on that play, it'll be second and one. There is a time So Adam on Ryan the took the brunt of what Junior Ugu is just planting out on the field. Well, the timeout on the field. 
Ugu stepping off. In for the Spartans is number 23, sophomore Logan Barnhill. When the clock is started, it'll be second and run for the Spartans. Unlike the Cavaliers, the Spartans huddling up after every play. Receiver is wide right, Jake Tewksbury, under center, Erta. Hanrahan in motion, the give is... Oh, we got Erta going. Nope, that's uh, uh, Erda. Yep, Erda. Erda has gone. The ball and he's, he's taking off 10-yard line, 5-yard line. That's a touchdown. Line. Touchdown. Erda. Milford Spartans on the board. Touchdown, Spartans. 4.49 of the first quarter. 67-yard touchdown run by the Spartan quarterback, Gavin Erda. That gets the folks here in Milford up uh, out of their seats here in the first quarter. Certainly does. This is a big crowd here. It's probably about a thousand people here. On average, you see between a thousand and two thousand people, fifteen hundred on average. Spartans have a late offensive lineman taking the field for this point after touchdown. Erda is the holder. Colin Craig, the kicker. Kick is away. The signal is that it is a good point after touchdown. Spartans take the early lead, 7-0 over the Cavaliers of Hollis Brookline High School. The penalties that started this game for both teams, not the way either coach probably wanted to start this game or the season, but for head coach Keith Jones, he has to be happy with his offensive team's performance. They got set back in their first, uh, first series with a penalty. Their second series, however, a couple of feel-out type plays, a nice big run by uh, Junior Udu, and then that just opened the holes for um, for Gavin Erda. Right. He took off 67 yards, and with his speed, the uh, Cavaliers simply weren't able to catch up to him. Yeah, and they brought that right up the center there. So you got Kyle Forsley, and uh, uh, I'm not sure if Colton Burrows is back, but in the, the core of that line is a big line. They're and, opening uh, big holes for the Spartan offense. That, that drive was... A minute and 41 seconds, uh, not exactly <laughs> what we expected from the Spartan offense. We thought they'd grind it out a little right. bit, uh, but we'll, they'll take the quick strike offense, put points on the board. It was a four-play, 90-yard drive by the Spartan offense, and here we go, the kickoff, Colin Craig, straight down the middle, ball gets through Austin Johnson into the end zone for the touchback. The Cavaliers will take over at their own 20-yard line for first and 10. Amani Effadil and Austin Johnson were back deep, and that ball kind of skipped between the two of them. Neither was able to field it cleanly, so the touchback will result in a first and 10 at the Cavalier 20-yard line. Sander Wimmer in the shotgun. The give is to Robinson. Robinson turns the right side, picks up four, maybe five. Winner's handoff to Robinson. Gain of about five yards on the play. Ben Merrill on the tackle for the Spartans. It'll be second and five for the Cavaliers. The ball is on their own 25-yard line. We have Colin Robinson as a, as a freshman. He's gotten a lot of the load for the Cavaliers, particularly in the running game, but apparently has good hands too because I know he's caught two passes from Sander Wimmer here in the first quarter. Wimmer drops back, the right-handed quarterback steps to his left, complete over the middle to number 17, that is Zach Redis. The junior the wide receiver was met by Spartan Logan Barnhill. Moves the chains, first and 10. 35-yard 30, line for the Cavaliers. Wimmer with slot right. Quick pass out to Johnson. Johnson with one move. Picks up a yard, maybe two. He's met there by a host of Spartan defenders, including Michael McGuire, 200-pound senior defensive end for the Spartans. was in on the tackle for the Spartans. It'll be, It'll be interesting to see how the Cavaliers. Milford's defensive line adjusts here because uh, number 42, Joseph Shepard, was double teamed on that one. Wimmer looking to pass again, does so, completes that one to Shea Philbrook. And Logan Barnhill took him down. Barnhill met him at the 40-yard line. 
About a five-yard gain, maybe six. Runner's pass to Frederick was complete. Third and four coming up. Three minutes to play in the first quarter. Slot left formation. Wimmer back to pass. He's going to roll to his right. We have a flag on the play. Wimmer's taken off. He turns the corner, moving up the right side. He's really, oh, he, if he extended the ball, it appears he picked up the first down. We will, however, have to see what, what the flag is for. Yeah, we do have an injury on the field. Michael McGuire. Mikey McGuire. Mikey McGuire is down. He's holding his right calf. Uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, if he got if he got spiked or if he got uh, if he's got cramps. Preliminary indication is a hold on the Hollis Brookline Cavaliers. We'll wait for the official signal, but right now we have an injured Spartan on the field, Mikey McGuire. The penalty is against the Cavaliers. Preliminary call up like holding. So the call is for a chop block. The personal foul. That'll move the ball back into Cavalier territory further. The penalty will move the ball back to the Cavaliers 15 yard line. Penalty brings up a third down and basically the Louisiana purchase. It'll be 30 yes. <laughs> and 30 yards to go. For and they're moving public, the pumpkin. <laughs> our public address announcer says 30 something, or 30 yards for a first down here. All right, Coach Shepard, what do you dial up for a play for 30 yards to get a first? Well, 30 yards, we're going to have, you're going to see Gavin Erda kind of scope out that, uh, that ball. He's going to look for an interception here because I'm sure we're going to see a pass. Free safety, going to play a little deep, yeah. play a little center field perhaps. Michael McGuire was hurt on the play for the Spartans. Sander Wimmer in the shotgun formation, takes a high snap, looks to his right side, completes to Johnson. Johnson is met after a short gain. Very short gain. Not the 30-yard play Coach Lonis was looking for. Matt Hannon on the stop, 5'10 senior. For the Spartans was bending but not breaking, allowing that ball to be caught but making sure of the tackle. Of only about a yard or so fourth down, so we should see a punt down. at this point. We got Gavin Erda has gone back, as well as Logan Barnhill. Appears to be Connor Warren back to punt for the Cavaliers. That, ball is, that punt is blocked. Stay away from that ball. And it is downed. And the Cavaliers by the Cavaliers, Shea Philbrook. The block was uh, apparently by Jacob Ingraham. I had a number 32. That ball was really tempting. Junior Ugo wanted nope. to touch that ball, but I got the I had the wrong call on that. Uh, apparently, that ball was blocked by Junior Ugo. Again, we'll double check the uh, the tape on that. So another great opportunity for the Spartans here. But first down, and we're down at the 22-yard line, 23-yard line. So. First and 10 on the Cavalier 23. Spartans taking over with great field position. Already up 7-0 in the first quarter. Flexbone offensive, Coach Johnson. The give is up the middle to Junior Ugu. He picks up, ooh, he's gotta be 7-8. Nice blocks on our line there. Ben Kilgore, who's a sophomore this year, just laid a nice on end trip. on that Coming one. Gain of about nine yards. Nine yard gain play. makes it second, second and one. Down and one yard to go from about the 14 yard line. You mentioned Ben Kilgore, the uh, 6 2, 210 pound sophomore. Right. Coach Jones has uh, been heard to say often that he's really proud of the size of this line. He is. He does have some concerns about its depth, though. Yeah. So. So once you move past the first line offense, I think that right from there, we're kind of wondering what makes up the offense from there. Um, but again, Ben Kilgore is one of those kids that he wanted to be a tight end. There's about five kids that want to be tight ends on this team. And uh, Coach Erda went to Ben during uh, camp and said, you know, we have some needs on our line and, and you, you could fill one of those spots. And, and it's nice to see a sophomore pick up and, and, and do what it is, whatever it needs for the team. Um, 
rather than what he wants to do. So he's, he's doing a great job right now. That last play was a give by, from Erda to Ugu, uh, straight dive play off guard right. Picks up the first down, first and 10 from about the 11 yard line. Junior Ugu middle. again up the middle, Game where he's upended by several Cavaliers. And there, he we just saw Samson Junior Hodges push people back about middle. 10 yards on that, as long as well as Kyle Forsley. So that gave Ugu plenty of running room. Second down and two from about the four yard line. Spartans can earn a first down without scoring here but they're certainly well into scoring position. Erda under center, gives it to Ugu, up the middle, picks up three, maybe four. Players are signaling touchdown. There's the official signal, touchdown, Junior Ugu. Joseph Shepard, I think, put on the stripes and caught it before all, everybody on the field there. I was looking for the guys in the striped shirts make, to make the signal first. Uh, I've, I've, I've learned the hard way not to trust the players. <laughs> So here we are seeing exactly what Milford did against uh, Central at the Queen City uh, Jamboree last week. And um, Milford usually grinds the football out a few yards here and there, but we're seeing them make some pretty quick uh, long plays and, and scoring quickly now. Sophomore place kicker Colin Craig with the point after touchdown, making the score 14-0 with 10.8 seconds remaining in the first quarter. So Coach Keith Jones with a senior-laden team, 22 returning from last year, also having key contrib contributions by uh, underclassmen, not only yep. juniors but sophomores. Right. You mentioned Ben Kilgore, but your place kicker, Colin Craig, also yep. contributing not only on kickoffs but uh, two-point after touchdowns. Right. That can only build confidence, I would imagine, in a young player exactly. as part of a successful program. Yeah, we also have uh, Noah Santos that we'll see here uh, playing tackle as well. Um, this team mirrors a lot of back to 1984 when this uh, Spartan team, back when it was MASH, uh, won the championship. But this is uh, this team comes together quickly and, and mirrors that, that class. And we'll be celebrating that class in, uh, in a few weeks here. We'll be talking a lot about that 1984 team. Uh as uh, players come back to Milford to celebrate, what, 35 years 35 since years. the uh, last Division II state championship. Colin Craig's kickoff is fielded by Johnson. Johnson working up the right side, ha right hash mark, basically. He's brought down at about the 23, 24 yard line. There's something uh, Zen-like in the first two offensive series by the Spartans. Both series four plays. The first one covered 90 yards. The second one, Cavaliers gave them the ball uh, in great field position, 23 yards. A minute 45 on the second drive as well. I'm not sure Coach Keith Jones cares how they score as long as they score at least one more than the other team. Right. Wimmer gives the ball to Robinson up the middle. Robinson picking his way for about six. Robinson on the We're going to see Coach Jones here you know, make sure that his players don't let up and, and um, keep our feet on the ground and keep driving. So that brings us to the end of the first quarter of play on a overcast but otherwise beautiful night here at Spartan Field. 14-0 is the score. Spartans with the first quarter lead. Opening the 2019 NHI AA football season. On that last kickoff, I just want to make mention of some contributors. We always have our key contributors, but we just saw number 52, Zach Karen, fly down the field into that backfield, and Hollis didn't give up, get many yards after that kickoff. So that outstanding uh, hustle. Spartans are definitely bringing the uh, full contact game tonight. They're not shying away from contact. They're going in strong. I've seen some good form tackles. Uh, with a big team like this, Coach, are you ever concerned about conditioning and their ability to sustain this over the course of an entire Entire game and an entire season for that matter. Certainly, when you when you start getting up by points, you know we're 14 up by 14 points right now. You start worrying about the the players getting lackadaisical, losing that form tackle, uh, not driving through the hips and wrapping up. And um, so far, we haven't seen that, and let's hope we don't see that. Those will be keys throughout the season as well. And you, you start uh, getting a little too confident. So although the Cavaliers are down by two scores, this is a wide open offensive style of play. Uh, it's a, it has a quick strike capability. And as you're saying, if the Spartans tend you know, wear down a little bit, oh, Wimmer, uh, Wimmer's fum, uh, almost loses the uh, snap, but he rolls out to his right side. Pass was intended for Robinson, incomplete. 
We just saw a nice pressure by number 42. He, he was begging for that sack, and uh, he had Wimmer running on his toes. Again, that defensive line that's set up right now, we're in that 5-3. We've got Shepard, Ugu, Hodges, um, McGuire. Some outstanding linemen right, man, right now up there. Flag on the play. We'll move the ball back into Cavalier territory a little further. Spotted just shy of the 30-yard line. The ball is back on the 30-yard line. Will now be second and 11. Wimmer, shotgun Wimmer formation, Cavaliers. trips left. Wimmer lets it fly, looking left. That pass intercept is intercepted it. by, I believe, Hanrahan. Hanrahan. Hanrahan's moving up the middle of the field. He's tackled from behind by Shea Wimmer Philbrook. It's a second interception for the Spartans tonight. Hanrahan. And that moves the ball into Cavalier territory. It will be spotted at about the 46-yard line. Spartan offense back in the driver's seat. Exactly. We're, we're seeing where these guys have aged a little bit. Last year, Sean Hanrahan wouldn't have had that ball. He would have given it up to Hollis. Uh, this year, he was right toe-in-toe -toe with them and um, turned right at the right time and, and took that interception. He actually the one thing he wanted to caution, though, is that he's switching hands while running, and uh, we hate to give that ball up. Spoken like a true coach. So here comes the Spartan offense working um, from the 46 yard line. First and 10, flex bone offense. Hanrahan takes the handoff. He's trying to turn the corner on the left side and just barely able to do it. He's wrapped up there by number 72, John Rutledge. Rutledge, big boy, 6'1", 195. Kind of established that corner. Thought Hanrahan had turned it, got his shoulders squared up, but Rutledge was right there to meet him. Erda under center. Give his to, oh, Erda keeps it. He goes off tackle left and he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's taken to the house. 10, 5, touchdown, Gavin Erda. Touchdown, Spartans. Gavin Erda. That's one of those give and takes where, where they'll even fake me out. So I thought Junior had that ball. And my first comment was going to be that Junior stood up with the ball and ran in. But then we see Erda taking out that outside. And right off of uh, the tight end, Joseph Shepard ran the ball right to the end zone. So Erd has been running this offense, this run-pass option, uh, triple threat option, really, for uh, Coach Keith Jones for uh, three years now. And uh, read that play perfectly, defensive end, showed his numbers, so he tucked it up. And right. You know, what's interesting enough is this uh, Spartan program is mirrored by what was the Milford Mustangs program, and it's now the Junior Spartans. But uh, Erd has been running, actually, this program now for... Got six years at least. So these kids know what Jones is going to play. Um, they've, they've seen these plays, and, and you may even find some of these guys know what the defense is doing before the defense even knows what they're doing. Kyle Forsley with the snap. The uh, place was uh, was held, or the, the hold was uh, out of Gav by Gavin Erda. Place kick, Colin Craig. 21 nothing. We're just two minutes into the second quarter of play. Milford with a three score lead. And we'll go back to last year where three scores was the magic number for Hollis. So the game isn't over. Amani Elfadil and Austin Johnson back deep for the Cavaliers. Colin Gregg setting it up for the kickoff. That was a two-play, 46-yard drive, consumed all of 49 seconds. Who says Milford it doesn't have a quick strike offense? That's right. We're, it's still a smash mouth, but... Craig's kickoff is fielded by Johnson. Johnson working up the right the right hash. He crosses mid. He crosses the uh, center line and he's taken down at about the 25 yard line by Milford's Caden Zelinski. So Milford Spartan football here on Granite Town Media. 
in association with the Milford Spartan Booster Club. We're working out some of the kinks here at Spartan Field as we look to bring you all five home games and select away games throughout the course of the season. Wimmer in the shotgun takes the snap. He's looking to throw. Finds uh, Austin coming across the middle on a short Austin pass. Was wide open, but he slipped on the field. I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open, actually. Probably he was, was looking to get hit. I think he was, and Caden Zielinski was coming in fast. Zielinski made the stop on that uh, kickoff, and he was right there in coverage as well. So we have given some of the, the uh, defensive line a breather. So right now we've got, um, looks like Dan... Danny Hugh is now in the nose tackle. Right? Robinson nose. running hard to the left side. It got strung out. He did turn the corner along the sideline right in front of the Brook Hollis Brookline bench. Picked up the first down. Looks like he stepped out of bounds at about the 45-yard line, plus or minus. We'll establish that in a second. The gain is good enough for a first down. The gain was out to the 41-yard line. It will be first and 10 for the Cavaliers from their own 41. Two wide receivers on the right side for Wimmer. He drops straight back from the shotgun. And he's his five-yard pass is complete to number 17. That's Zach Reedus. Matt Hannon on the tackle for the Spartans. So Mike Hannon made a nice tackle. Would just be nicer if we could see him just drive through the player and not spin the player. And a long five. 9.35 to play here in the second quarter. Second and five, Wimmer. Three steps after the... Shepard right behind him. Wimmer working his way up the right side now. He, he breaks contain, and he picked uh, up a first down. Steps out of bounds at about the Spartan 30-yard line. Milford's Trevor Coyne. Pushed him out of bounds. So a handful of tackling errors on that play. Cavaliers, again, no huddle. Getting the play called in from the sideline. And Coach Jones has decided he's bringing back in his first line defense. So we got Junior Ugo, Shepard, uh, Forsley out in the line there again. Wimmer looking to pass, steps up in the pocket. Flag on the play, Wimmer steps out of two tackles. He's still going hard. Finally brought down by Spartans number 23, Logan Barnhill. Yeah, and we had holding on Hollis. Holding penalty on Hollis will bring that play back. Cavaliers really moving the ball well, but being killed. Being killed by penalties. 21-0 is your score. 9.09 to play in the second quarter. Penalty on that play. Brings the ball back to the Spartan, probably about the 30 yard line. Oh, coming back a little further. Spot, is Spot foul, so that brings it back to the line of scrimmage. We'll move the ball back. And again, here we are. Now, we'll get, now we march off the penalty. Here we are, we are up 21 nothing. but Coach Jones, you know, give, give the uh, seniors the varsity team a, a little blow, but then we bring the first line defense back in. We're no okay, first and 25 from the Spartan 45. Now first and, first and 25. And the Spartans have called. We have a timeout on the field. The Spartans have called timeout. 21-0 is your score. 8.59 to play. A little different look on the defense from the 5-3. We got Ben Kilgore now going in the tackle with Junior Ugo playing the nose tackle and move Shepard back over to the mic and linebacker. Coach, what do you think that's all about? Just trying to throw a, a wrinkle at the Cavaliers, uh, keep them guessing on... Um, well, I think what he did is he gave Caden Zielinski in the, the middle linebacker a little bit of a breather. Uh, we gave um, Hodges a little breather by sending in uh, Ben Kilgore. And we didn't give up size in any of those positions. We may have given up a little bit of speed in the linebacker spot, but our line is, is still strong even when you bring in the sophomore Ben Kilgore and move Junior Ugo over to nose tackle. With a 21-point lead here in the early going, still first half, first game of the season, it's a great opportunity for Coach Jones to put in some different right. players, maybe build some new looks or different looks um, exactly. that you can file away for use uh, later in the season, perhaps, uh, you know, in the playoffs, if this team is that fortunate. Right, because we know from the coach's corner and your discussions with coach that he's a little bit uh, fearful of what his his uh, 
second line offense and defense looks like so. We're underway again. First and appears to be 25. Wimmer back to pass, looking to his left side. Pocket is collapsing around him. He's brought down by Wimmer several Spartan defenders. For a very short game. I'm not sure if that was Samson Hodges taking down. Hodges. Yep, so Samson Hodges took him down. Nice Hodges tackle. on the tackle. Double slot formation for the Cavaliers. Wimmer claps his hands, drops straight back, passes. Complete. Caught. Complete to number 17, Zach Redis. Nice little gain. Picked up about. Mm. Enough for a first down there. Mm. It's a 15 yard gain. No, that's a. Still going to be short. It's going to be nine, short. It's gonna be nine yards short. Third and about nine. I'm playing the optimist and looking at the wrong plug. <laughs> they had a long. They had a lot of real estate on that first down play. Wimmer completes the pass to Philbrook, but he's dropped. immediately. Oh, that was intended for Philbrook. He couldn't come up with the catch. We have a penalty. A flag comes in late. I'm going to guess that's going to be against Hollis, and it's probably going to be a. Um, might be a chop blocker. We have a Milford player down. Uh, Hanrahan was slow in getting up. That pass was intended for Redis, but he was met and met hard by Logan Barnhill. Pinball foul, personal foul against the Cavaliers. So the personal foul on the Cavaliers is going to result in a loss of another 15 yards and loss of down. So here we've got, see what kind of pressure our defensive line is going to give because we have a uh, quite the mismatch in our corners right now. We've got number 88, uh, Jake Tuxbury out there, and he's going up against... Uh, Number Wimmer eight. straight back, rolls to his right, lets it loose over the middle of the field, intended for Redis, but Gavin Erda met the receiver at the same time as the ball. We do have a flag in the backfield, however, holding on the Cavaliers. What do you think, Coach? Are you going to accept that penalty? Oh, it, it, it's fourth down, so I imagine we're going <laughs> to deny that one and, uh, and give Gavin Erda another opportunity. For the Spartans. The ball is on their own 43-yard line. That was a case where, where uh, Hollis saw Gav Gavin Erda coming, and, and they decided they were going to drop the ball. That was a great hit by Erda. He timed it perfectly. And Dennis, you're going to learn when I ask some of those questions. They're being they're, that's a that's a lame <laughs> attempt at humor. Spartans take over at their 43-yard line. Flex bone offense for the Spartans, Erda under center. Ugu, fullback, close to the line. Hanrahan in motion, the give is to Ugu. Junior Ugu, up the middle. He gets the, moves the ball to about the 50 yard line. It'll be second down, three yards to go for the Spartans. Junior certainly showing some speed in that hole there. That was a great hole between, uh, it looked like it was between um, Hodges and, and Kilgore. Kind of between the uh, left guard and left tackle. Ugu stayed low on that play too. He did. What a difference when he stays low and he gets his pads He's menacing at that point. Parallel to the ground. He's a man among boys out there when he gets rolling downhill. Ugu three yards into the backfield behind Erda. The give is uh, not given. Uh, Erda kept it. He goes right. For he picks down. up the first down. Moves yeah, the ball to the right hash mark. He's good enough for a first down. Tackle was by uh, Quinton Connors for the Cavaliers. First and 10 at the 46-yard line. 7.03 to play in the second quarter. 21-0 is your score. First and 10 here as we continue play. Interesting enough, we have not seen a pass yet by the Spartans. And yet they have a quick strike offense. Exactly. <laughs> here comes Erda under center. The give is to Ugu. Ugu picks up two, maybe three. Off tackle left. Really off guard. He's finding, he's picking his way along the line. 
taking what the defense will give him. Yep. For such a big man, it's amazing how nimble he is in that confined space. The man moves his feet very quickly. He does. He's a, he's a fast guy. Eight yards to go for the Spartans. Ball is on the Cavaliers' 44-yard line. Ball is spotted inside the left hash mark. We're in Cavalier territory. Second and eight. Erta on her center. Ugu behind him. Hanrahan in motion. The give is to Hanrahan. He finds a yard, found maybe two, just off tackle left. Hanrahan on the carry for the Spartans. That'll bring up a third down and um, down to the Cavalier, probably six, line. about six or so. We got five minutes, 44 seconds the in the half. It'll be third down. Pace of play is certainly different when the Spartans have the ball, huddling up, taking their time, not worried about the play clock. They haven't had a, and no, neither team has had a play clock uh, penalty yet. Right. Joe Shepard moves from right to the left side, left end. We have timeout. a timeout on the and field the by Cavaliers the Cavaliers of Hollis Brookline. So with 5.23 to play in the second quarter, Spartans up 21-0. Halftime, we will have performances by the Milford cheer team. Together with the Milford March, uh, Marching Spartans, they open the game with uh, the, the national anthem, and they'll be performing their new show for the 2019 season, Space, nice. under the direction of uh, Bradley... Smith, and we hope to have uh, Mr. Smith join us for a little bit in the third quarter, talk a little bit about his band and on some of the competitions he'll be doing uh, this fall. So the weather is certainly cooperating. Uh, earlier it appeared that we might be looking at some rain, at least according to weather.com, but the weather has held off so far tonight, and it's a beautiful night to start the 2019 football season here in Milford, New Hampshire. That's for sure. We got a great crowd here. Looks like our concession stand is full. Only the Booster Cup uh, Club president is concerned with the concession sales. That, uh, but certainly, uh, certainly does look like quite a crowd over there. Was that half price hot dogs tonight, or uh, not yet? There's trying to get rid of last season yeah. stock, or what? <laughs> <laughs> So we're, we have the uh, Milford Spartans are back up to the line. Third and six. Erda under center. He drops back. First pass of the first night pass. for the Spartans. Joe and he Shepherd. looks for Joe Shepard along the left sideline. That pass complete to Shepard. Shepard ran over number four, Adam Rayen. I do think we just saw a tank go down the field. It's quite the pass and catch, a little pitch and catch. That moves the change for, chains for the Spartans. With a 21-point lead and, you know, here in early in the first half, it's an opportunity for Coach Jones maybe to play with his offense a little bit mm -hmm. and, and uh, work on some, some offense that he might not typically use in a, in a, in a closer game. Erta keeps it and he moves to the left side. He's trying to turn the corner. And he gets close to the sideline where he's brought down by number 28, uh, Kyle Manley, for the Hollis Brookline Cavaliers. For the Cavaliers. So after a nice soft touch pass, Erda keeps it, runs off tackle left, and delivers a pretty punishing blow to Manley. Yeah, definitely, and we're seeing that the, the Spartans are not giving in. They're, they're keeping, keeping the, uh, the pedal down. Ball is on the left hash mark. Second and about one, Erda under center. Fumble on the play, and it is still not yet recovered. We're gonna have to wait for a signal because a couple of different players had it and let it squirt out of their hands. Players on the field seem to think it belongs to Hollis Brookline. But we're gonna wait for the official signal. And it was recovered. Recovered by the Spartans. Ball was recovered at about the original line of scrimmage. That'll bring uh, third and one. Interesting enough, Hollis thought they had the ball, but that was their wide receiver, or wide, uh, their can't, corner that was calling that. You can never trust those little right? guys outside, right? What do they know? <laughs> Optimus. Third and about one. And the Spartans are still just inside the left hash mark. Ball is just inside the 15-yard line. Kyle Forsley over center. Erda ready to take the snap. Gives it to 
Erta handed it off. Barnhill, I believe. Barnhill, it looks like Barnhill got a carry on that play. Picked up first down for sure. Gain goes to the Cavalier. And that ball is now at the 10-yard line. First down, Milford Spartans. 3-10 remaining in the second quarter. 21-0 is your score. Spartans. It's first and goal on the 10-yard line. We're seeing some nice depth at the running back spot. We got Ugu, Zielinski, Barnhill, Hanrahan. I'll take him a little snaps and Erda takes the snap. Ball is on the ground again. Looked like Ugu might have put it on the ground. Fumble on the handoff. Again, we're going to wait for the official signal. It looks like Junior took care of that ball on the ground. Ugu did get back down on, on that. It'll be second and goal. Probably lost. Lost about two yards on the play. 12 yard line. Second and 12. Second and goal. 228. And we are hearing the band warm up for their halftime performance. The opening uh, uh, opening night of the season for the football team is also the first performance for the cheer team and the f marching band. Erda gives the ball to number Kaden 22, Zelensky. Zelensky well uh, to the right side. Looks like he got to the carry. five or the four yard line. Definitely inside the five. Gain on the play to Kept the ball in bounds so that did not stop the clock. We're just under two minutes to play in the second quarter. Third down. Third down about half a yard inside the five, right on the five yard line, we'll say. Third and goal, third and five. Coach Keith Jones, flex bone offense comes out. Receiver wide right. Erda under center. Erda keeps it. He's rolling to his left. He's looking He's in the Shepherd end zone. Open, Shepard's open. Erda keeps the it's ball. A for a touchdown. And he takes it into the end zone for a score. Gavin Erda, his second touchdown running tonight. Spartans dominating this first half of play. 27-0. And there we are seeing a nice option that Gavin Erda has. He, he could have kept the ball, thrown the ball. Either way, the touchdown was going to happen. He had Joe Erda, uh, I'm sorry, Joe Shepard wide open, um, but uh, decided to pull the ball down and, and race to the end zone. Yep. Back to kick the PAT is a sophomore Colin Gregg out of the hold of Gavin Erda. Forcely snap is good. The hold is good. Kick is away, and it is good. Milford Spartans take a commanding 28-0 lead here in the first half of play at the Spartan Stadium, home of the Milford Spartans. Something we've seen a lot tonight are kickoffs by the Milford Spartans. We have. Started the game with a kickoff, and now four scores into the game. Right. Milford's kick kickoff team is certainly getting its workout tonight. They certainly are, and it's a new kicker for us. So. They're smart. They're bringing their own now. That's good. Keith Jones, the head coach of the Milford Spartans, has to be happy with the performance of his team tonight. Defense has forced some penalties, forced some turnovers with two interceptions. Uh, the tackling has been sound. Good fundamental football so far by the Milford Spartans. Yeah. I think we're seeing right now, you know, the, the seniors have talked about their strength and their confidence. Um, you always wonder after the what happens in the first game how confident you are, and we're seeing them play well. Amani Effadil and Austin Johnson back deep for the Cavaliers to receive Colin Craig's kickoff. That will be fielded by Effadil. He's going to run up the left side, turns the corner on the left hash, and is brought down right in front of his Hollis Brookline bench by number four, Darian Kimball. Five foot seven inch, 136 pound junior running back. He's going to say another underclassman. So. There's a log jam at running back on this Milford Spartan there is. team. Talk about depth. <laughs> it might not be that deep along the line, but the depth at running back is amazing with this Spartan ball club. It definitely is. Sander Wimmer in the shotgun drops another three steps back from that position. Pass is complete across the middle to Johnson. Johnson is met at the uh, right hash by a host of def Spartan defenders. So we just saw Hannon and Zelinski pursue him nicely, where Zelinski caught him and, and had him turn, but then Han Hannon came up and made a nice stop. Erda got his nose in on that play as well. Amani Epidel on the reception. Really wasn't sure how Milford's three-man defensive uh, backfield was going to hold up against this passing attack. And we have another completion to Johnson. 
Moves the uh, chains to the Milford Spartan 41 yard line. So Hollis Brookline is certainly not um, giving up on this game whatsoever as they are uh, with under a minute to play in the first half moving the ball into Spartan territory. Yeah, we, we saw a little bit of a misread there at the, the mic, which was Caden Zielinski in there. Wimmer to Johnson again. This is the Wimmer-Johnson show, this, uh, this particular drive. It is. A little extracurricular activity going on after that catch like, by like uh, Johnson. Johnson. A little bit. Spartan Matt, Spartan's Matt Hannon was in on the play, a little shoving and pushing between Johnson and Hannon. We have to see how, how the officials sort this one out. 31 seconds to play um, in the in the half. I don't think Coach Chris Lonis really wants to slow this quarter down. His team's moving. They've got momentum. Right. Um, it will be interesting to, interesting to see because it looked like both players got a shot in on that one. It definitely did. And, and this is a two teams that have a little bit of history. They're, they're competitive in all on all areas, whether it's football, basketball, or baseball. So um, we're, we're seeing that right now because you know they, they meet up on all those sports. Is that a warning to the bench? A personal foul on the uh, Cavaliers. The penalty is a personal foul against the Cavaliers. It looks like we gave a bench warning as well. I think it was a bench warning. So bench warning to the Spartans, and um, that ball moves backwards for the Cavaliers. Bench warning issued to the Spartan bench. Ball is spotted at the 46-yard line, so it takes it out of Spartan territory. I would think Coach Jones would just like to get out of the half at this point. I would think so. No other extracurricular activity, nobody getting hurt, 31 seconds to play. Go into the locker room and talk about what they've done well and then start thinking about the second half and, and what they can improve on. Right, and, and he's, he's going to have a conversation where he's going to say, keep your head in the game. You know, on the uh, Spartan Coaches Corner Show, Coach Jones was telling me that one of the things he likes to do and that his players are aware of, he likes to uh, sing karaoke. I think he'd do that at halftime? <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd like to bring a mic in there and we'll find out. Maybe we can get our media director <laughs> from uh, Granitetown Media to help us out with that. Wimmer back to pass out of the shotgun again. He's rolling to his right, and he is pressed against the sideline, running into his own player, stumbling and bumbling, and is finally brought down. At least three Spartan players had their hands on him on that play. So this is the pursuit we talked about at the beginning of the game, where you had, uh, you had uh, Forsley in there, then you had Junior Ugu in there, we had Shepard in there, and then we had uh, Hodges in there. And eventually, uh, Hollis finally fell to the ground. So if you're an optimist, that's great. You have three players that got to the ball. If you're a pessimist, none of the three of them tackled him. He eventually just fell on his own. So, so you so. go into the you go into the uh, in, the coach is going to go in there and say, you know, where's our form tackling, and why aren't we wrapping up? Clock has run down. First half of play is in the books. Twenty-eight to zero for the Milford Spartans, who came out with a. A game plan that we expected to be a uh, pound and gr uh, ground and pound uh, style against a wide open offense of the Hollis Cavaliers. However, it's the Spartans who had the quick strike offense. None of their drives lasted more than none of their scoring drives lasted more than four or five plays, and uh, it nets a 28 to zero lead for the Spartans. 20-20-60. So here at halftime, we have about 15 minutes of uh, halftime uh, activities which will begin, I believe, with the Spartan cheer team. To midfield, where the, Milford Spartan the surprise really is today is that the uh, where Hollis hasn't scored. I think we really expected this to be a, a grinding out football game. Um, and we may still see that in the third quarter. Milford posted 21 points against this uh, Cavalier team a year ago, but Hollis uh, put up 28. Right. Uh, they have the ability to score, but we're going to take a, uh, a step back at this time and appreciate the athletic ability of the Milford Spartan cheer team.
Not to Belford Spartan, Vasily Tiraspor. Mr. Brad Smith and the Martin Spartan Band would like to thank the Milford High School Music Coaches for their efforts this year and their support of music at Milford High School. Thank you also to the National Chamber Orchestra and Chapel Factor for their donations. First, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Martin Spartans. Its 2019 mission is to explore strange new music, to seek out new experiences and face new challenges, to boldly go where no Spartan has gone before. This evening's musical selections include Mars and Jupiter by Gustav Hart, the overture to Dancer in the Dark by Bjork, and music from Michael Giacchino's Star Trek. The band is led onto the field by drum major Catherine Galano. Color guard captain is Samantha Bovitz. The percussion captains are Aiden Fidera and Fiona Birch. Soloists this evening are Carmen Chappell, Jack Hanson, and Brian Melvin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, performing for the first time this season, Miller Milford High School Marching Spartans.
to salute so that I could finish announcing the thing.
And we're back at halftime of the Milford Spartans season home opener against the Cavaliers of Hollis Brookline High School. Hello everyone, I'm Kevin St. Ange. We just saw the Milford Spartan marching band perform its 2019 program, Space. Prior to that, we saw the Milford cheer team perform here at halftime and joining me now is the head coach of the Spartan cheer team, Kelly Lacasse. Kelly, thank you for joining us. How are you tonight? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Very good. I understand this is your first year as the head coach of the Spartan cheer team. It is. It's my third year with the Spartans, but first year for head coach. Tell us a little bit about your team. How many uh, participants do you have? And I have um, 16 girls, uh, 17 girls, sorry. Um, 17 girls. Uh, right now we're just working on our comp routine and trying to get prepared for that. We do have a few competitions to um, perform at this fall. So. What's the range of classes that you have? Freshmen? Do you have freshmen all the way to seniors? Do you have yep. a, a representation from all classes? I do. I have, well, I have three freshmen, which is nice. Um, they'll carry it on. Um, I have four seniors, so they'll be leaving us. But yeah, I have a variable of each class. And uh, how many competitions do you have in addition to your performances at the Spartan football games? For the fall, we will have three competitions. October 27th is a memorial one um, at Hollis Brookline. And then we have one November 3rd and November 10th. Kelly, I hope you'll come back and join us for uh, a little update on how the season is going um, down the road. But for right now, I just want to thank you for coming and joining us tonight and talking about your program and wish you and your team the best of luck throughout the season. Great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. That was Kelly Lacasse, the uh, head coach of the Spartan cheer team. Uh, they performed at halftime just a few minutes ago, right ahead of the Spartan marching band. We may be joined in a little bit by the marching band director, Brad Smith. But right now, we're going to bring Dennis Shepard back in, the color commentator for tonight's game. Dennis, that first half has to be something that Coach Jones was just happy to, uh, you know, happy to see. 28 nothing, first game of the year against a high-powered offense. Um, he, he scripted it out. Um, we saw the changes that he made in practice in, this week, and I think um, they all came to flourish for him. So the Hollis Brookline Cavaliers came in with their high-powered offense. Uh, quarterback um, Sander Wimmer did throw the ball around the yard a little bit. Had two interceptions, though, and those interceptions led to really good productive offense by the Spartans. 16 of 22 for 111 yards. Uh, two interceptions, though, uh, really kind of hurt the Cavaliers together with the penalties. Right. So I think those interceptions, we saw some of the maturity that the Spartans brought over last year. Um, those are the same players that played in that backfield last year. Just a little bit more mature this year. So as we go into the second half, the Spartans will receive the, pa uh, the ki opening kickoff of the second half. It is a deep kick into the corner. Looks like Logan Barnhill is there. Picks it up at about the five-yard line. Now he's coming across the field, and he has a little opening wiggle in the middle, and he's brought down at about the 25, 26-yard line. Made a nice little return out of that. Connor Warren for the uh, Cavaliers on the stop. It'll be first and 10 as we open play in the second half. Spartans holding a 28-point lead. The return was to the 26-yard line where the Spartans have a first and 10. Dennis, something to watch for here in the second half is if the Spartans can get up by another touchdown, that would uh, change the complexion about of this game a little bit. Yeah, in interesting enough, we've just come out of the locker room with a younger um, offensive line right now, so we're seeing a little bit, little bit of a change for Jones right now. Ertis turns around and hands it off. Can't quite make out who that is from here. Might have been Barnhill. Caden Zielinski on the carry. So on that line right now, Check we've got that. Dan McHugh that is, is, uh, made an appearance on the line. Um, Still next to no Ben Kilgore, He's, we've got some confidence in our sophomore that we've put up on the line there. So I'll check myself on that. It was Caden Zelensky with the carry. Picked up maybe half a yard or so. I guess what I was getting to with one more score, Dennis, that'll change the complexion of this game because the clock will run throughout the rest of the second half. Exactly. Right? We go to running clocks, so and we'll start to see our JV team make an appearance. Something to watch for in the second half. Erda 
gives off tackle right. Looks like Zelinski again. Zelinski on the carry. Zelinski picks up about four, bringing up third and six. Third and six. For the Spartans, the ball is on their own 30-yard line. We're just underway here in the second half of play. 28-0 is your score. Erda trotting into the Spartan huddle. Spartans, of course, wearing their home blue uniforms trimmed in white against the Hollis Brookline Cavaliers. Also wearing blue and white, but they're in their white road uniforms. Erda under center. Erda keeps the ball, off ta uh, turns the corner up the right side, long gain, still on his feet, forced out of bounds at the Cavalier 42-yard line. Colin Robinson. 37-yard line. Blake on the I'll check myself on that again. Bergeson with pushing uh, pushing Erda out of bounds at the 36, 37 yard line. From the Cavaliers, 37 yard line. Erda with a 33 yard run. He had a long 60, about a 67 yard run in the first half to open the scoring for the Spartans. Erda gives to Hannon. Hannon. He was going. He was trying to go to the left side. No gain on the play. But he's stopped at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten at the ten-minute mark, third quarter. I'm sure, head coach Keith Jones would like a long, time-consuming drive. We definitely want to drive some time off that clock. So here we are at 9:49 in the third quarter. We still have the ball. Erda under center. Ugu the lone setback in the double wing formation. Hanrahan in motion. The give is to Ugu up the middle. He's still moving forward, driving those yard, driving Ugu those Ugu feet. Picks up about five, maybe six. Gain is to the 35 yard line. <laughs> Looked like he had more than that, just but they spot it just inside the Cavalier 35-yard line, third and seven. Clock ticking away, three minutes gone by here in the third quarter. Coach is taking the uh, air out of the ball. So he certainly is, yeah. It's probably a touchy thing to we'll say here in New England though, huh? <laughs> hand or hand in motion. Berta keeps the ball in the backfield. He's met by Hollis Cavalier, is Adam Slater, by the Adam junior Slater. defensive end for the Cavaliers. Played a nice, uh, played a nice um, disciplined defense there. Broke down in the backfield and made sure of the tackle. Yeah, they certainly did. It looks like we had uh, the, the uh, ends on the defensive ends. Made it nice dry. Uh, Nice read on the defense. Clock still ticking away. We're down to 8.15 in the third quarter. Almost four minutes of play. We have a timeout on the field. And Milford has, Milford called, has called timeout. Time. One of the things we neglected to do at halftime, because all of the halftime festivities was thank uh, some of our local sponsors, which I will turn over to Dennis Shepard. So the, the boosters are, are sponsored by a lot, lot of uh, local companies here and, and provide us a, a good amount of uh, donations that help run the, uh, the Spartan program. So we'd like to thank uh, Contemporary Chrysler Dodge with their blue sponsor, Gurney's Automotive with a blue sponsor, the Johnson family as a blue sponsor, Tewksbury Wealth Management as our blue sponsor, Dunkin' Donuts as a white sponsor, Coco Realty, Sahigan Valley Lacrosse, as white sponsors, Crotchet Mountain Golf Club is a gold sponsor, Hurricane Hill Development Company, a gold sponsor, Maple Brook Family Dentistry, MG Sports, Milford Mini Storage, Prana Salon, all gold sponsors. And then we wrap that up with the silver sponsors from Hitcher Manufacturing, Hometown Insurance Agency, Medlin Motors, and Philip Aubrey Optometrist as our sponsors for the boosters. So here we go with the, the Milford offense. 
fourth down and about 11. Erta deep to punt for the Spartans. First time we've seen the Spartans line up to punt. High snap. Erta's rugby style punt uh, running to the right. Kicks it down to about the 10 yard line. Erta's punt is out of bounds on the Cavalier 11 yard line where the Cavaliers will take over first and 10. First punt we've seen tonight by the Spartans. I'm sure Coach Jones would like to work on some of his special teams uh, you know, that will have to uh, perform well for him for this team to have success this year and, and, and advance in the playoffs. This drive gave Coach Jones an opportunity to bring in some, uh, some of the players but not necessarily switch right to the JV team. So if we didn't go to a running clock, which is nice. We, we still get to see some new new bodies in there and see what they can do. Sander Wimmer, the quarterback for the Cavaliers, takes the snap, runs Sander off guard, Wimmer, left Wimmer. side, takes it out Back to the, about the 16 yard line, 17 yard line, still deep in Cavalier territory. 7.47 to play, 28-0 is your score, second and five. Cavaliers have Colin Robinson in the backfield. Zimmer takes the snap, three step drop from the shotgun. Pocket collapses around him, so he's stepping up and running up the middle where he's met by Caden Zielinski and a host of Spartan tacklers. Right, we did a nice job. We, we thought for sure he was going to air that ball out, and we were looking for it, but Milford's done a nice job of putting pressure off from that defensive line tonight. Caden Zielinski was also in on the tackle. The game was good enough for a first down. First and 10, 25-yard line of the Cavaliers. Wimmer back to pass, stepping to his right, now stepping up the middle, and he has a first down and another couple yards before he was met by Zelinski. Tripped up initially, appears by big number 71. That would be Hodges. Samson Hodges. 6'5", 215, he's chasing Wimmer downfield. Right, and, and Sampson's a lanky guy, tall, super strong on that line. Wimmer back to pass, speed. looking to the right side. Oh Phil, oh God. Caught deep by number 80, Blake Bergeson. He takes that all the way to the end zone. First score of the game for the Cavaliers. It was a nice defensive comeback by number three on the Milford Spartans. But uh, again, this is where we, we see the, the maturity of our corners. We don't want to see the, a player get behind you, and he, he, he was playing behind. Bergeson got a step on the uh, defender, and Wimmer found him right away and yep. lofted that ball out there nicely for him. A nice touch pass, 61-yard touchdown pass. Wimmer to Bergeson. Wimmer is the placeholder for this point after touchdown, and the kick is up and is good. 28-7 is your score, 646 of the third period. We've said all night long that this Cavalier offense is a quick strike offense, um, so Coach Keith Jones is going to have to use this as an opportunity to get his defense regrouped. Yeah, exactly. And, and refocused and get the energy level back up to uh, to meet the challenge presented by this Cavalier offense. Certainly. We see Coach Lones putting in the offense that he, he uh, with some strength that he has. And um, Coach Jones played a little bit with his defense, and, and we got burned a little bit. But this also gives Coach Jones an opportunity to run the game that he wants to play at the same time without having to worry about the running clock. So the Cavalier kickoff team has taken the field. Back deep are Hanrahan and Logan Barnhill. Caden Zelinski also back there for the Spartans. Kick is to, I believe, uh, Barnhill. Barnhill on the left side, picking his way along the left hash and he's brought down at about the 30-yard line where the Spartans will take over. 6.39 of the third quarter. 28-7 is your score. That last scoring drive by the Cavaliers covered 89 yards in four plays, took only a minute, 17 seconds, 61-yard touchdown from Wimmer to Burgesson. And that's kind of the offense that we expected to see in the first half from Hollis. 
And again, we made a little bit of an error with Trevor Coyne was number three that uh, let that player get behind him and uh, and score that touchdown. So, so here we go with the, uh, the Spartans varsity team back out in the field. Erda under center. Looks like he gave to Ugu. Ugu's running strong up the middle. Ugu picks up six, maybe seven. Ugu on the carry. Game was out to the 36 yard line. Second and about maybe four, and strong about four. To go for the Spartans. Gavin Erda under center. The give is to Hanrahan. Hanrahan goes off tackle left side. Looks like he's picked up enough for the first down. 5.57 to play in the Hanrahan third quarter. As you heard earlier, we spoke with the Spartan cheer director, Kelly Lacasse. Joining us in the booth in a few moments will be the Milford marching band director, Brad Smith. We're going to wait for the next dead ball, and we'll uh, ask uh, Mr. Smith to join us and talk a little bit about his uh, Spartan marching band. Right now, 540 to play in the third quarter. 28-7 is your score. Spartan first down in their territory at the 40-yard line. Looks like we have... Oh, go ahead. Looks like we have the uh, the first offense out there now for the Spartans, in minus uh, Colton Burrows, who we saw go down with an injury earlier. It looks like down in the field he's got a knee injury. I see some ice on that, but he is walking around. So it looks like Dan McHugh is now playing in that tackle spot on the, uh, the right side. Barnhill off tackle right side was met by Sander Wimmer. Second down and about eight for the Spartans. Taking their time in the huddle, certainly not looking to uh, to rush their play. Taking taking some time off the clock along the way here. Erda under center. Flex bone offense for Coach Keith Jones. Erda keeping it so far. He makes they pitched the pitch. it over the to Zelinski. The pitch from Erda to Zelinski. Uh, no, no, Matt Zelinski. Hannon. Matt Hannon. Matt Hannon, Hannon, yeah. Matt Hannon picked up about six yards on that play. Matt Enough Hannon for the first down. The Moves the chains for the Spartans as we move into Cavalier territory. To Ball Cavalier is spotted at the Cavalier 49-yard line. That's one of the nice, um, uh, impressive things that you'll see about the Spartan offense where Gavin Erda has a, a bunch of options that he can do. He could have kept that ball if that hole was open. Um, but just as the uh, Cavaliers came up to meet him, he pitched that ball over to Hannon for the nice six-yard gain. Andrew Burns wide right for the Spartans. Erda under center. Zelinski, the fullback in the backfield. Logan Barnhill uh, fake to Barnhill. Erda, Erda makes that turn. Turns the corner right side up the sideline. Moves the ball deep into Cavalier territory. Spotted at the 23-yard line. Spartans are moving the ball well on this drive. And Austin Johnson has a nice tackle there. 26-yard gain by the Spartan quarterback. <coughs> First and 10, 23-yard line, 20, yeah, 23-yard line. Spartans break the huddle. Erda takes them out to the line of scrimmage. Zelinski, the fullback. Hanrahan in motion. The give is to Hanrahan. He goes off tackle left, and he picks up three, maybe four. Three seventeen to play. 28-7 is your score. Second and about seven. Great job of the Spartans handing the ball around to, to several different key players tonight. Credit goes to this offensive line that has simply opened holes at will all night long. Um, most of their plays have been significant chunk plays, six, seven, eight yards at a time. Um, this is a rare three, four yard gain, three yard gain, I guess. Erda on her center. I believe that's Zelinski behind him in the fullback position. Hanrahan in motion again. The give is to Zelinski up the middle. 
again, you really can't say enough about what the line on the offense has done and what the defense has done. And it'll be interesting to speak to Keith Jones, the coach of the Spartans, later on tonight to see uh, where where he is with those keys. So we're right now we're a third down and three. Just over two minutes to play here in this third quarter. 28-7, Erta under center. Zelinski fullback, Hanrahan is one wing, can't make out the other wing. Hanrahan in motion. Erta looks like he gives it to Hanrahan, who's met by the entire right side of the Cavalier defensive line. Hanrahan on the carry. That was actually a rare time that Hollis made a penetration on that offensive line on that left side. Typically, we've seen uh, Hodges and, and Ben Kilgore just take control over there. This is where, like, again rare occasion where Hollis teamed up on that. They kind of kind of looked like they knew where this ball was going this time. One of the things I would imagine head coach Keith Jones um, is going to look at this game film and game film and say is that you know we're dealing with 16, 17, 18 year old young men. Focus has to be uh, of utmost importance. You can't let down on a single play or, or um, you know, here in the second half, it, it would be easy to get complacent. But while we have a timeout on the field, I'd like to uh, welcome in Spartan Marching Band Director Brad Smith. Mr. Smith has been here at Milford for a number of years and put together this year's program, Space. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having me in. This is great. Tell it's us. Like I feel like I'm on uh, Nesson talking to Joe Castiglione <laughs> or something now. Well, listen, my mom said I had the face made for radio, but um, we are on television here on the uh, broadcast uh, platforms of Granitetown Media, and it's an opportunity for you to tell us a little bit about the marching band and the program that you put together for this year. Sure, yeah. Well, thanks for having me on. we got a great group of kids. Uh, they're talented, determined, hardworking, and I'm proud of all the work that they've put in so far this season. Um. What was the inspiration behind this program? Are you a Trekkie guy, a Star Star Wars guy? Yeah. What, what, space, what, it's just kind of a... Yeah, I think space is intriguing to everybody and I'm definitely into Star Wars and Star Trek. Uh, planning for the show starts at the end of the previous school year in the spring. So we come up with a, a concept and, and then we reach out to uh, show designers and they start the planning then. They start writing the show. In fact, this year's show was custom design. It was written by a, a number of professional uh, writers. In fact, our drill writer uh, works for the um, Drum Corps International winning Blue Devils. Uh, yeah, so we have a, a show that's designed specifically for us and hasn't been performed by anybody else. Gavin Erda's pass was intended for Logan Barnhill, fell incomplete. 116 remaining in the third quarter, 28-7 is your score. That was a fourth down play, so the Cavaliers will take over on downs. But, Mr. Smith, uh, your, your band uh, works in the preseason just like the football team does. Tell us a little bit about what's involved with um, getting your musicians um, and color guard prepared for a season. This is, uh, they're on their feet, they're marching, they perform in parades and so forth. What's, what's involved? Yeah, absolutely. We started our season about three weeks ago. We have camp that starts before... Uh, school starts and the kids are out there working every day eight to five and they're learning to march their spots and they're learning their music uh, and then from there we dive right in we have a very busy start to the school year where we have parades we, we enjoy getting out and performing for the local community and the Labor Day parade and upcoming we have the Veterans Day parade end of the year we hit the Memorial Day parade. Wimmer drops back to pass and he sends it downfield intended for Wimmer's pass Number 88, Bergeron is on the receiving end of that. That moves the chains and flips the field to the Cavalier, to, excuse me, to the Spartans uh, side of the field, 45 yard line of the Spartans. Wimmer is back to pass again, stepping up in the pocket and he brings it down and he's running right up the middle where he's met by Gavin Erd, a quarterback versus quarterback on that play. Yeah, it was a nice run. Coach, my understanding your marching band will be performing at all of the home games here at Spartan Stadium. Are you gonna take the program on the road at all this season? Are you doing any competitions or events? Definitely, that's true. Yeah, we'll play at all five home games and we also have a, uh, an exhibition that we do over at Dover High School. It's a long-standing tradition. All the New Hampshire schools perform out there. Wimmer's pass falls incomplete, intended for Bergeron. 
And we also compete. We attend uh, a competition circuit in Maine. It's the Maine Band Directors Association. So we'll perform twice, once about mid-season and once at the end of a season. And that'll be our final performance of the year early in November. What would you say to parents here in the Milford community? There's a flag on the play. We'll get you that information in just a second. But parents in this Milford community that have young musicians at the elementary school level and the, the middle school level, um, how would you encourage them to encourage their students to stay with their musical instruments and, and, and join the band when they reach the high school level? You know, if it's something the kid enjoys, I would say just keep encouraging them. And keep encouraging them and keep nudging them in a positive direction. And it'll be something that eventually they'll start to find rewarding themselves. And there's so many wonderful lessons to be learned through music. So many wonderful social experiences and opportunities that are unique to music. Uh, it's just such a wonderful thing. And it, it's been a, a real privilege and pleasure of mine to be able to work with these students throughout the year. Penalty on the play was holding on the Cavaliers, moves the ball back to the Spartan 44-yard line, and the direct snap to Wimmer. He's trying to turn the corner up the left side. He does so, he gains the corner, and he's forced out of bounds Wimmer by on the carry. Milford's number 23. That would be Logan Barnhill. Logan Mr. Smith, Barnhill. I appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much for sharing uh, a little bit about your marching band. And um, as your season progresses and you get into your competition season, we'd love to have you come back and tell us a little bit about how the band has cha changes over the course of the season, their musicianship from day one to the end of the season. We'd love to hear more about it. Would love to do it, and thanks for having me on. I want to say uh, good luck to Coach Jones and Coach Lacasse uh, and all the Spartans on a great season. Awesome. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you, sir. That was the marching band director for the Milford Spartans, uh, Brad Smith. And coming back to me now is Dennis Shepard, our color commentator, Sander Wimmer, direct snap, running off tackle right side, turning the corner, trying to get to the corner, did not pick up the first down, just shy of the first down. He was met at the edge by Spartans number 20, Isaiah Velez. Nope, excuse me, that's the Cavaliers number 20. Matt Hannon. We could recruit for the Spartans, though. <laughs> Wimmerd back to pass, looking to his left side, pulls it down, steps up in the pocket. That pass was intended for Johnson, falls incomplete. So the sharp precision passing that we saw from Wimmer in the first half, the timing is disrupted. He's, he just hasn't been able to set his feet and get comfortable because of that push by the uh, Spartan defensive line. Certainly, he is getting a little bit of a little bit of dancing going on back there, but he, on that one pass there, he did have a little bit more time. So we're starting to see the Spartans get a little tired out in the, on that line there. Uh, Hollis has given them a little bit of battle. We've seen some players limping off the field, so um, there is a battle going on here. The Spartans are just winning it at the moment. We're nearing the end of the third quarter of play. 28-7 is your score. Time for one more play in the third quarter. Wimmer slips on the uh, on receiving the pass. Uh, Right there, we just did a nice job of Sean Hanrahan coming up and, and sealing off that end. Logan Barnhill was able to get in there and, uh, and kind of finish off the play. The Spartans will take over on downs. That's probably the third, third time we've seen um, the Cavaliers unable to convert on fourth down. Yep. Um, again, uh, must be, a, you know, for lack of a place kicker because it certainly would have been a long, play, uh, long attempt, but not out of, not out of, out of the realm of possibility. We're going to flip ends here at the end of uh, three quarters of play. 28-7 is your lead. Spartans, 28-7 is your score. Spartans lead as we start the fourth quarter of play. Dennis, I know we were talking about sponsors earlier. Did we get through all of your sponsors that you wanted to, to mention? We did. We, we did. Can, we can mention them again. Mention them again. <laughs> here we are with uh, Contemporary Chrysler Dodge as a sponsor. And actually, we'll see uh, Contemporary here on September 20th where uh, the Spartans are taking care of New Hampshire fight uh, tackles hunger with WMUR being here as well. Um, Contemporary Dodge will provide two Dodge trucks at, the, at our gates, um, and we hope to fill those with canned goods. So um, September 20th, if you have a canned good, you can bring that over to the Spartan Field here, drop them off. Uh, Contemporary Dodge is giving $1 per can. All those donations are given over to, uh, uh, Nashua, uh, to Milford's share program here in Milford. So um, again, Contemporary Dodge, a great... Uh, benefit the, uh, from them. Uh, Gurney's Automotive also uh, providing our, our sponsorship to us. Uh, they also provide our water to our, con our concession stand. So 
Uh, great advertisement opportunity there. Gavin Erda under center. He keeps uh, turns the corner on the left side, and he's going up the middle, and he's off to the races and now. The Gavin, Gavin Erda take off. down the left sideline. One man to beat. Blake Bergeson trips him oh, up. And oh, and he takes it down at the one-yard line. Gavin Erda on the carry. Down to about the two Gavin Erda had that corner, turned the corner, cut it back inside, up the middle, and he took it all the way to the one-yard line. Good hustle by Blake Bergerson from the uh, Hollis Brookline Cavaliers Sir, and, and not to give up on that play. And, and Blake, I think, came from the, the right side of that line all the way to the left side. So Took a, took a solid angle. 72-yard run by Gavin Erda. Spartans are rolling here just underway in the fourth quarter. 28-7 is your score. First and goal for the Milford Spartans. And again, we can't say enough about the Spartan line where, where our tight end, I think it's Joseph Shepard that's playing on the tight end there, and Gavin seems to, to hunt off of his butt and, and follow that block. The give is up the middle. I believe that was Logan Barnhill. We'll double check that, though. And it is a touchdown. Spartan touchdown. And that's a touchdown brought in from the uh, underclassman, Logan Barnhill. Thirty-four to seven. I don't think this game has played out any better than Coach Jones could have hoped. This is not what was scripted, and I'm sure even you know Monday when we go to uh, to video, he's, he's not going to be happy anyways. But um, certainly Kyle, excited about the win. But Kyle Forsley to snap, Erda to put it down. Colin Craig through the uprights, splits the uprights for the PAT. Thirty-five-seven. Spartans lead. The excitement about this game is we talked about the, uh, the the playoff implications of, of Hollis, and then we've got um, you know we got the Pelham games and we have the Sauhegan games. So really, the playoffs we're going to go through Hollis, and we're taking care of business tonight. Well, as we discussed, uh, National Telegraph described the Hollis Brookline Cavaliers as the best team to fail to make the playoffs a year ago. Five and four record. Um, although Milford made the playoffs a year ago, they did lose to these Hollis Cavaliers 28 to 21 at their field. So Coach Jones was saying in the pregame again, he's, you know, he just needs to get his players out on the field, get them playing football again. It's been a long year since um, since that loss in November to Alvern Certainly. in the first round of the state playoffs. The interesting thing about the uh, the Spartans team versus the Hollis team is I think you saw a lot of Hollis uh, players. Uh, graduate out of the program where Milford last year had five seniors um, and then we bring back 22 juniors to the senior program here so so um, this is a these 22 varsity players seniors varsity players that are playing right now are players that are together all year round where they're, they're playing basketball together um, on the varsity team and they're playing baseball together so uh, they're a nucleus that have formed 11 years ago as as Milford Mustangs some of these players have started kindergarten with each other so um, it's a group of players that are are almost completely family Colin Craig's squib kick was fielded by the up back Adam Slater Cavaliers start on their 40 yard line Wimmer back to pass looking down the middle does Released the ball intended for, uh, I believe it was Redis, broken up by Spartan number 20, Matt Hannon. <laughs> Wimmer brings the Cavaliers out, second and 10. Handoff is to Johnson. Johnson turning the corner on the right side. Can't quite get upfield though. Matt He's Hannon in pursuit out of that, that, that Sam position. Unbelievable how he pursued him right down the line. Trevor Coyne was able to get him to turn his shoulders in. That allowed Matt Hannon's pursuit to, uh, to, to close. And we have an injured Cavalier on the field. That stops the clock at 10.50. Here in the fourth quarter where the Spartans lead 35-7. So while we have this time out on the field, Dennis, as president of the Football Booster Club, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your efforts and what was involved with getting Milford Spartan football to be broadcast on the platforms of Granite Town Media. Sure. So, so just a little background on the Milford Spartan Boosters. The, the Booster Club is probably the largest booster club at the high school here. Um, and the, the booster program provides uh, funds for the football cheer, 
um, and any program that that is needed um, over and above what the athletic department can already provide. So over the years, uh, the boosters have provided the ice machines. Um, we've revamped the whole concession stand. Um, and, and we've really grown over the past couple of years to, to brand the boosters into into the uh, being an elite program, uh, able to fund and build the, the football and cheer uh, program. So when uh, we started a couple of years ago, we tried to get the broadcast again with the Grand Time Media, but um, there's some uh, political changes over on that end of town. Wimmer with the snap out of the uh, shotgun. His pass is complete to number 80, Blake Bergeson. Bergeson is across midfield to about the 40, Spartan 46, maybe 47 yard line. So efforts were made years ago to get this started and it, it, it only came to fruition this year, I guess. Right, so, so we were able to make contact with uh, Chris Gentry who's now with Granite Town Media and he, um, uh, he was able to, to kind of do it, you know, follow along what we were looking for and, and uh, get this up and running. And, uh, and it, it's exciting to see it out on, on TV and out on Facebook, and um, and hopefully we grow into other areas, not just football, cheer, and, and band, but we, we go to the basketball and volleyball programs as well. We'll keep an eye on those developments. Uh, right here at the Spartan Field, the development is that the Cavaliers are moving the ball. Wimmer's pass was complete to uh, Shea Philbrook, second down and about four yards to go. From the Spartan 41-yard line. Also, in other games right now, and, and again, key games that we have uh, that have playoff implications uh, for Milford as we as the season progresses. Hudson zero, Pelham zero. Wimmer takes it right up the gut, and moves over to the right hand side, picks up the first down. Actually, runs into his own player before he uh, where he's uh, when he's tripped up at the 30, 33 yard line. Thirty three yard line. Yep. The ball is on the. So I believe right now we're seeing a, our, the third line defense right now. Um, so you've got Joseph Shepard as the, the Mike and the middle linebacker. Matt Hannon as a Sam and, and uh, I believe Zil Logan Barnhill is now playing at the... Wimmer dropped back to pass. He got flushed from the pocket and he stretches it out to the Spartan 26 yard line where it'll bring up second down and a long four. 8.54 to play in the game. Spartans in command, 35-7. However, the Cavaliers are driving. So again, we've taken a little bit of size and speed off of our defensive line here. So uh, Hollis is starting to move the ball here. We'll see what happens as we progress. Wimmer gives to Robinson. Robinson goes over the right guard, picks up about three. Not sure he got the first down. Looks like Joseph Shepard and Kyle Forsley were, were right on there. They shut the door about half a yard short of the first down. Cavaliers come out. I don't think uh, I don't think Wimmer's been under center once all game. The entire game from the uh, play, the entire game from the shotgun formation. He takes off. Down the right side, and he's going to get past the defense, and he's going to score. Sander Wimmer scores the second touchdown for the Cavaliers. Brings the score to 35-13 with 7.57 to play. So on that play, Hollis showed four wideouts, and our defense got sucked in. Wimmer dropped straight back from that shotgun, but he broke contain. Exactly. Good penetration from the uh, Spartan defensive line, yep. but uh, discipline broke down, and, and he was able to get outside the box and and and, and keep going. The point after touchdown Andy is Bask's attempted by number 54. That's Andy, Andy Bask. It's good. 35-14 now is your score. Hollisbrook line 14. We've been saying all night that this Hollisbrook line. Cavalier team has quick strike capability. This game is far from over with just under eight minutes to play. Spartans so, are still playing with confidence. Just, they've got uh, some of the younger players, again, getting a feel of what the depth chart looks like. So with this uh, 
time on time out on the field as we're waiting for this next kickoff. You mentioned the 1984 championship team earlier in the evening. Certainly. Uh, October 4th, the Spartans will play host to the Sabres of Sauhegan High School. Right. The same Amherst school system that used to send its kids to Milford right. now has its own program. Certainly. And that night, apparently, the Booster Club will be hosting uh, the class of 1984 and um, bringing in players and cheerleaders and coaches from that team. Right, so we're inviting anybody uh, that, that comes from that area and, and, and uh, played in 1984. Um, and there's a lot of excitement about that 84 team because, again, I, earlier we mentioned that this uh, Spartan team mirrors a lot of the, of the qualities that 84 team brought. And that 84 team went to the, the playoffs and, and beat Pinkerton by, by a, a single point and then went to Laconia and, again, won their championship based on, on a single point. Um, so there's, there's a lot of pride uh, from that alumni group. Um, you and I come from those, those class days. We have a uh, short kick by Andy Basque trying to, um, trying to recover the ball for the Cavaliers so they could get some offense going, but uh, unable, to, unable to do what they wanted to there. Eric Hussey for the Spartans was able to cover it up and preserve possession. Back to that 1984 team that you mentioned, that was the last time that the Spartans have won the state championship at this Division II level. Of course, right. the 2003 team won a state championship, not to take anything away from that. Right. Realignment at that time had put them in Division IV, I believe it was. I believe so, right. Um, they've been to the state championship game a couple of times under head coach uh, Keith Jones mm -hmm. in his 19-year career here with the Spartans. Uh, but you're right about the parallels between that team, uh, 1984, and this team, the number of returning seniors right. and the experience from previous years. It's going to be an interesting season here yep. at Spartan Field. The give is to Junior Ugu. He goes off guard left side, picks up maybe. Ugo. The interesting maybe. parallel with that 1984 team is that the uh, that 84 team had a lot of, uh, basically they, they considered themselves family. Um, and then here we go with the. Oh. And the Cavaliers recovered. We had a fumble on that play. Couldn't couldn't see it, it develop really from here. For the Cavaliers. Appears that Ugu maybe the, in the exchange from Erda to Ugu, it looks like he put the ball on the on the field. Right. The Cavaliers have taken over now at the 48 yard line of the Spartans. Sander Wimmer fakes the handoff, drops back. Trevor Coin oh, and it's in. Caught by Burgesson. Burgesson is free down the right sideline. He scores for the Cavaliers. Pass to Blake Burgesson is complete for a touchdown. Man, oh man. Blake Burgesson, the 6'2", 160-pound wide receiver, is a junior. He's showing a lot of uh, skill and ability here tonight, connecting with his quarterback. He is, and we're, we're keying up on Trevor Coyne, who's he's a senior, but he um, last year didn't play with us. He, he played as a sophomore. Uh, it's coming back for a second year, so we've had a, a few errors in there that can be that can be fixed. Andy Basque, the place kicker, out of the hold of Sander Wimmer. Basque's kick is up. We got some dirty laundry on the field. Got some flag on the field, and we don't see a signal from the officials. It appears that it was wide left. We'll clean up the laundry and figure out what the penalty was here. 35-20 is your score. 7.37 to play. The call is offside against the Spartans. Milford was offsides on the play. That will give Cavaliers another opportunity here. Down by 15. Do you take the one or do you go for two, Coach? I think you take the one. You take your points as you get them. A lot of time left, 7.37 left in the game, uh, down by 14, and we've seen how fast Hollis can throw that ball up and, and score. So They still have to convert this point after. Basque is set to kick. Wimmer set to hold. Hold is, ball is down. Kick is up. Yeah. Looks good. This one is good. So that brings us to 35-21. 14 points by my count. That's two scores and two PATs. Yeah, we have a lot of time game, left. This game is not over yet. And we see Coach Erta bringing the group together right now, and, and uh, I think he's looking to solidify this defense up and, and get this ball back. Dennis, you've been around this team during the preseason, and you've been around these players for many years. What is Coach Coach Erta telling his team right now? How is he getting the energy back up among his players? I, I think he's just telling them to buckle down, do their job. Um, 
and work together again. You know, when you're when you're okay. up by 20 or okay. plus points, it's easy to get lazy, and that's what we I think we've seen a little bit of some lazy tackles, uh, letting some players get behind us, um, and and Hollis certainly can throw that ball up and score fast, and we we saw that last year, and here we are in the uh, second half. We've seen that again. So. Milford won the first half, 28 to nothing, but they're losing in the second half, 21 to seven. Right. 35-21, your score, but it's a two-score game at this point. And Andy Basque set to kick off for the Cavaliers. Uh, it, he, his uh, his onside kick was a great, had a great bounce. Yeah. Ball and player met at the That's same time, but there is a flag on the play. I don't believe it went the 10 yards it needed to. There is a flag on the play. We'll have to wait and sort this out to see who establishes possession. I'm sure Coach Head, head Coach Keith Jones uh, wants the ball and wants to take some time off the clock. So the Zebras are talking at midfield about Andy Basque's onside kick. Couldn't tell from here who the Spartan player was that fielded that, but ball and player met at the same time and a Hollis Cavalier joined the party and leveled the Spartan. It may be that uh, the kicking team made contact with the offense before the ball crossed 10 yards. Exactly. Again, a lot of time left. It's uh, 35 Milford, 21 Hollis with seven minutes, 35 seconds left. Referee is talking to head coach Keith Jones and uh, was about to walk away. Coach Jones took his headset off and called them back. They're still having a conversation. <laughs> I don't think they're talking about where they're going for dinner after the game. Probably not, no. <laughs> Interestingly, the Spartans still have their kick return team on the field. Hollis Brookline has its entire team on the sideline as the conversation continues. 7.35 remaining on the game clock. Weather absolutely held off for us tonight. What a beautiful fall night here in Milford for the opening of the season. Here's the call from the officials. And the penalty is against so it's an offsides on Hollis. Illegal, illegal procedure on the kicking team. Has to be that the ball didn't cross the 10 yards or right. they made contact with the return team before uh, the ball tr uh, went 10 yards or was touched by a Spartan for that matter. So we're gonna see Milford have Hollis re-kick the ball. It'll push the Cavaliers back deeper into their territory. And now that, uh, now that Cavaliers have shown the onside kick, we've got our kind of Milford's hands team out front there. So the interesting thing here is the Spartans have stayed on the field with their kick return team. The, the officials were talking and the Cavaliers were on the sideline. Everybody was ready, uh, everybody was waiting simply for uh, Hollis to come back out onto the field here. Right. Not sure what the status of the play clock is on that, of course, of coming off of a dead ball. Andy Bass back to kick for the Cavaliers. A little spicier now that we have pushed them back a little way. Squib kick up the middle is going to be fielded by Logan Barnhill, I believe. Dangerous play the as the ball was rolling way. around the 25-yard line of the Spartans. Probably would have been better off just to let it to go. To stay away from that. Exactly. Yeah, I would, I, would have, uh, I would have coached him to stay away from that ball at that point. Can he do that on a kickoff, Coach? Uh, he does not. The Spartans will have, shouldn't have to touch it. from their own 25 yard line. So the Spartan offense will take over at their 25 yard line. 734 to play. 35-21 is your score. Andrew Burns comes wide left for the Spartans. Erda under center. Ugu in a tight formation behind him. The give is to Hanrahan. He turns the corner on the left side where he's met by number 56, Quinn Connors. Quinn Connors was, I believe, mentioned by the National Telegraph as well as the union leader as a player to watch for this season for the Cavaliers. So Milford comes out with their starting offense once again. And so you can tell that we've decided that this is a, uh, a game where we're gonna make sure we win. This game is still competitive. It's a two score game with 7.04 to play. 
Spartans definitely taking time off the clock uh, in the huddle, as they've done all game long, in contrast to the Cavalier offense, which has gone no huddle most of the game. Erta under center. The give was to Ugu up uh, the middle. He, he the put ball. the ball on the ground but again. It, it appears that he got it back Ugu at the uh, Milford 43-yard line. Yes, he did. Was it was enough of a game to move the chain. Spartan first down. First and ten. As big and strong as Ugu is, he has put the ball on the field several times tonight. Um, wonder what that uh, offensive practice is going to look like next uh, next week with his uh, with with his ball control. Well, I think the discussion will be made on Monday when film. Um, that we need to keep the ball just tucked under and two hands on the ball and not switching our hands because we've seen several of our running backs do that. Erda under center. Philip Salisbury out. No, excuse me. Jake Tewksbury on a wide left. The give, Hanrahan I believe, was to Hanrahan. Stood, right up. stood up at the line of scrimmage. John Hanrahan on the carry. Sandra Wimmer on the stop. Gain of about one yard on the play. Second down, Second about down nine yards the for the Spartans at their 44 yard line. 540 to play. Quiet, quiet stands here at Spartan Stadium. It is a quiet crowd right now. I'm not sure if they're quiet or they're concerned or both. Right. Still a pretty good line over at that concession stand, coach. I don't know. There is. Looks like there's some room, though, if everyone wants a hamburger to run right over. The give is up the middle to Ugu. Ugu still pumping the legs, but holding on to the ball this time. Ugu Picks up about up two, maybe three. Gain was out to the 48-yard line. That'll bring up a third down in five, maybe a, maybe six, strong five, maybe six. Five for the Spartans we'll go with third and five. 48-yard line. We're under five minutes to play here. Nice, calm night at Spartan Stadium on West Street in Milford. Gavin Erda, senior quarterback for the Spartans, takes him out of the huddle, tight formation. Ugu behind him in the fullback position. The give is to... Uh, that was Logan Barnhill. Barnhill. That was Barnhill off Logan tackle Barnhill right hand side. I have to tell you, Coach, uh, De um, Gavin Erta with the ball is very deceptive. He, you know, is deceptive. he sticks it in there for, for Ugu as if he's going to give it on the, on the dive play to the fullback, pulls it back, and of course when they're running away from us, it's awfully hard for us to see that, that he kept it and is handing off to the second player. Right. Uh, if it's hard for us to see up here, I can't imagine what it looks like for the lineman for the Cavaliers. Yeah, he, he's a magician down there. He does a great job of hiding that ball. And, and you have to wonder where we're on these hash marks here that at some point he's not going to go off of uh, the tight end and take it himself as he just as did As he now. just did. Uh, around the corner, right side, he's met by the Cavalier defense. Gavin Ritter on the carry. Austin Etchell's big man, whose name we haven't talked about much tonight, but he was also recognized in the press preseason for the Cavaliers. 6'2", 240-pound senior, made the stop after Erda's uh, run, second and five. We are inside of four minutes, inside of three and a half to play, actually. Another tight formation by the Spartans. Erda, Ugu, Barnhill. Flag on the play before we get this one rolling. A false start. Penalty flag. The preliminary call is a legal procedure. So we actually had two guys moving in that backfield. One's okay, two's too many. That's right. But that two is one too many. A little bit of that inexperience on Logan Barnhill's spot where he just kind of took a step over. Great opportunity for Coach to play a lot of players and, and use some of that depth, particularly at running back. Um, we are at 3.05 to play with the Spartans holding a 14-point lead. 35-21 is your score. Second and 10 from the Spartan 41. Erda 
rolling to the left. He's going to keep it. Tucks it back up inside the hash mark. Moves the ball to the Spartan 30, I'm sorry, the Cavalier 30 yard line. We've got to move the chains. Have to love that. Third and long. So we just saw that offensive line with uh, Shepard and Hodges create a huge hole over to that left, uh, that right si left side. And uh, Gavin just drove his truck right through there. What was interesting about that play, though, Dennis, is that the, the Spartans have been handing the ball off to Ugu and Logan Barnhill and, and uh, Matt Hannon, running tight, up inside, up inside, up inside. That play, Gavin stretched it deep. He rolled deep. He got about he eight to nine yards deep before he turned up. Yep. And when he did, he had a hole to pick from. We have a right. tight formation again. Let's see if they run it in tight or try to go around one of the edges here. See Barnhill me. in motion. The, I believe the give was to, to Matt Hannon. Flag on the play. Now the give was to Barnhill. Barnhill got the ball to about the 24 yard line, but there is a flag. Logan Barnhill is going in motion from that flanker type position right. behind a tucked fullback alignment that Junior Ugu was playing. Certainly. So I, th I think what they're doing is, you know, we've we've shown so much Junior Ugu down the middle. We've shown uh, Zelinski down the middle. Um, so right now those, the Hollis linebackers are, are trying to get a read on it. But what we've done now is we're taking a, the big Joseph Shepard on the end and, and Hodges, and, and now we're kind of sealing off those ends ov over on the defensive side and creating those big holes so we go around them. So that gives Erda an option of either throwing a pass to the wide receiver, throwing a pass over, over to Junior Ugo over the middle, or just or handing it off. So right now we're seeing a, a few options that he has on this offense. Keeping in mind, of course, the Milford football team has uh, 52 players on its roster. Hollis comes in here with uh, about 12 fewer players than, than Milford does. So the depth on both teams, although we're concerned a little bit about the Milford line, um, really the depth across the board for this Cavalier team. Right. At the same time, we've got, the, got a feel of some of the depth that we have on for the Spartans. You know, we, we lost Colton Burrows early in the game with a knee injury. But uh, Dan McHugh has filled in nicely in that spot on the on the right hand side at the guard. And, um, We're two minute two seconds short of the two minute warning here. 35-21 is your score. We're going to we have a tight formation again. Gavin Erda taking a knee here. So it looks like we're gonna get safely off the field and take the win. Coach Jones not looking to run up the score necessarily, although it's a 14 point game. One more score certainly wouldn't be running it up. No, nope. but I believe he believes that this game is is in hand. Take the knee two two more times, and run out the clock for the first Spartan win of the 2019 NHIAA football season here in Division Two Southern Conference. So we've seen the strength of the Spartans, but we've also seen what Hollis has, and I'm, I'm sure they're going to still uh, provide an exciting season this year, and, and it'll still be a playoff atmosphere at some point between the Hollis, Sohegan, Hudson. Pelham um, and Milford being right on the top there. So as this game winds down with a minute 13 to play, uh, Dennis, let's take a look at uh, the Spartans' next opponent. Uh, September 13th, that will be an away game. Friday night, 7 p.m. at Manchester West. What can you tell us about Manchester West? Well, Manchester West is going to be, um, this will be a competitive team for the Spartans and, and, uh, and provide, we'll be, we'll be have a challenge as well. You know, there's, there's a lot of great teams here in the Southern Conference, but I, I do believe Manchester West will be a, um, a weaker opponent for Milford at this point. Gavin Erta takes a knee once again. Knee. Brings up fourth down and 14. Play clock is uh, running as well as the game clock. 33 seconds remaining in this contest. Less than 30 seconds left. That wraps it up here at Spartan Stadium where the Milford High School Fighting Spartans won their first game of the 2019 season. They avenge a loss from a year ago in a 28-21 loss to the Cavaliers at their place. Certainly. Um, this is a great win to open the season for Coach Keith Jones and his staff and his, his players. It's also a great way for us to start the season here on Granite Town Media. Dennis, I want to thank you and your efforts to get this pro uh, production off. Media opportunity to bring uh, Spartan Sports on the air. 
We'll look forward to seeing you uh, next week at Manchester West as the Milford Spartans travel to Manchester for game number two of their 2019 season. And we'll call it a night. Great. Thank you for joining us.